Hello and welcome to K9 Dash Camps and today I'm going to be doing a video I haven't done before and might do again. So today I'm showing basically our new car. So this is a 2016 Skoda Octavia Estate. Uh, this particular one is in the brilliant silver colour and has done um, 38,000 miles and um, basically is a sort of a a new car which replaced the Mazda 3. So I'll do a couple of specs on this car. So this car is of course 2016 and it's a 16 plate. Um, it is the SEL which means it's sort of above the mid range heading towards the higher spec cars which means it's got lots of nice features on it. And when we bought the car two months ago it had 32,000 miles on it with only one owner. Um, the engine in this is a 1.4 petrol turbo, it does 0-60 in 7.9 seconds and is a perfect balance between performance and economy as you can get between 50 and 60 mpg on a sort of long journey and short journeys you can get about 40 out of it. So this particular car is of course um, built on the Golf a state chassis and is a VW engine and sort of VW mechanics. So it's basically it's a VW Golf without having a state, without having to pay the price. So anyway, let's have a look around the exterior. Now lots of people aren't a great fan of the Octavia, they think it's a bit bland, but I think that it's sort of the Art Deco style with all these sort of sharp, sort of angled and lines and things like that, it's very much in the Art Deco style and not the sort of typical curves that you see on modern cars these days. So the sort of first thing to notice on the front of this car is because it's the SEL, it has front fog lights which are very nice. It also has a um, automatic lights with dip beam and of course uh, running daytime running lights. The thing that I love particularly about this bonnet is on of course the dash cam you can see the bit that's raised in the centre and it just looks really nice. If we now move to the side of the car, so this car has 16 inch alloy wheels on it which is an upgrade from the master that only had 15 and they were steel um, these the spokes are nice and wide which means that when washing it sorry it's a bit dirty but as you can see by the ground that's going to be impossible to keep clean um, but they are fantastic for keeping clean due to the wide spokes this particular car doesn't have any dents on it at the time of recording and because it's sort of nice high spec car if I grab the key I know one of the nicest things about this car is a key as well. If you lock it, the rim mirrors fold in. This car has an awful lot of sort of 
angled lines in it, which are rather nice. However, they will show up dents, which isn't so good. But I haven't experienced that at the moment, and hopefully never will. So these rear wheels, again, 16-inch alloys. I would just like to mention this also has, of course, the lovely sort of uh, mud flaps at the back, which sort of prevents mud. Something that I'm not used to is, of course, that there's no button by the driver's door to open this. It's simply done the central locking. And so it means it's always open unless you lock it. It also has, which is a typical Skoda thing, this lovely uh, magnifying glass and ice cream. If we move to the back of the car, everything is pretty bog standard here. The only thing, of course, to note, really, is the um, bumper protector, which we have added. Having a big dog means that your bumper is going to get all scuffed up. So the previous owner hadn't had this on, so uh, we added it on anyway. As previously said, this is the SEL spec. Anything above the SE gets rear parking sensors which are very useful in a car this size. Even though it's a small car, I was used to a hatchback, so... So if we go on this side, this is a Dunlop tyre. Now this tyre is the same age as the car, so possibly an original. But again, not entirely sure, as it has quite a high mileage, so I very much doubt it. So let's now sort of take a look at the interior. So anyway, please do mind the slightly messy interior, but because you have a dog, it's very difficult to. But here's the, of course, the, the front of the car, and this does have this sort of nice screen in front. And as a, as it's the SEL, it does come with standard, with a sat nav, which is quite nice. However, I still do use um, the other sat nav which I previously had because uh, I might as well having two sat navs better than having. None. Another thing this car has, of course, is um, Bluetooth as well, which again is anything above the SEL and various other things like or cruise control, of course, um, hill start assist. One thing which is very interesting about this car is the 12 volt socket. So it's placed behind the 6 speed manual gearbox and the reason this is unplugged is because the 12 volt socket is always live, which means that if you wanted to leave the dash cam on overnight, if you're parked up, say, in a city, you can without having to sort of do the, you know, without having to sort of plug it into the engine and all that business. However, it is also annoying because you have to remember to unplug it every time, like now. Um, and it does only have one 12, 12 volt socket at the front, which the Mazda had two. So it means that I had to buy a multi one, basically, so I could have the sat nav and the dash cam running at the same time. But uh, the main reason we bought this car was basically behind me. But before I cover that, I would like to say because it's the SEL, it does have a part leather interior. So the main reason for buying this car was that, well, the Mazda didn't have much rear leg room, and this car has bucket loads of leg room. So the seat is actually in my position and there is more than enough leg room but even with um, other family members who are a bit taller than me there's still plenty of leg room behind which is great. At the moment you can see it's current, these rear seats are currently covered by a dog cover because we have a dog to protect the uh, seats from hairs and also because it's sort of fake slash real leather um, they can also quite easily rip them with their claws so that's not so good. This however does, which is something I'm sure I've seen many cars but haven't had myself, is a rear air conditioning unit which is fabulous for long journeys with the dog. Normally the dog does go in the back but 
of course on holiday you need the boot space for all your stuff so the dog had to go in the back here so so one of the best things about this car is the boot 610 liters massive this beats everything in its class and is primary the main reason other than the rear leg room why we bought this car so basically this boot is massive there's not really much more to say other than this is absolutely vast it does have a ski hatch which makes it easier for loading um, big long items this car does also have um, a variable boot lid which is not standard it's an SEL spec and above thing of course you can get it as an extra but it means you also get a nice flat load lip here and it means you can store in this case shopping bags um, underneath now underneath the shopping bags it's rather a pain to get to right now is of course a place for a spare wheel now this car when we saw it and we're going to buy it it did have one of those terrible you know punch and repair kits personally not a fan of them however the dealer sweetened the deal and um, put in a spare tire for free not a not a pram wheel but a full spare tire so that's another great thing you have a full spare tire so like where I am now I'm currently quite a long way from home and if I needed to um, had a puncture on the way back it means that I could place the tire and drive all the way home because of course with a pram wheel so you can only uh, drive 50 miles one thing I would like to note is as well as me forgetting to remove that white bit of sticky back is that this car is fitted with the VO A129 dual dash cam which you'll be seeing a hell of a lot of so this is fabulous for a big car because and a small car as I will show in future videos but this will fi hide behind the mirror and it means that the driver nor the passenger can actually see it very easily which is great news and also it means that you generally can't see it despite this being a big car VO still provided with more than enough wire to uh, connect it up with the rear one this particular one I rounded the mirror on the actual boot lid itself but in my other car I have mounted it on this sort of carpeting stuff instead but my other car is a lot smaller so that has to be done um, and the wire of course comes all the way down these rubber thing to then come up there and goes all the way the length of the car hopefully I can show you there you can see it running all the way along there and there's a great little dash cam so this all sounds nice and rosy doesn't it brand new car nothing wrong with it right so a three-year-old car nothing wrong with it that is pretty much true apart from one thing it needed an oil service pretty much as we got it which is fine it was only about a hundred and something pounds and what the oil service found wasn't so good but a leaking shock absorber which is a rather pain that's going to be another 100 to 200 pounds to do and something that you shouldn't really need to do at all and this comes to buying used cars really bought this car from a reputable main dealer but yet they still didn't tell us about the leaky shock absorber and it should have been should have been found on the MOT which they either rather naughtily didn't rather naughty didn't mention or for some reason missed it which is very hard to believe I found this online at cargo this particular car with the 1.4 the S anything above the SE and um, basically it happened to be in uh, Yeovil which is about an hour away which was great because the previous car that I'd found on Carguru was exactly the same but it had less mileage and was a grand more so we didn't really want to spend a grand more um, and it went the next day anyway these cars are incredibly desirable because of the 1.4 litre engine which is basically fantastic so um, so yeah when we saw it we picked it up we uh, reserved it as soon as we saw it saw it the next day bought it and the rest they say is history so as I said previously I was going to do a video as soon as we got it but 
I felt like I couldn't really give an honest opinion without having it for a couple of months. Plus, where I live at home normally, there's not really any space to record a video like this. But, so I thought the perfect opportunity is while I'm on my summer holiday because of this wonderful big driveway which is nice and secluded. So anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this different video. If you'd like to see videos in the future like this, then please do, because I've got another car to show you as well, much smaller. I won't reveal it yet, because it's a secret at the moment. Um, there's, of course, the other dashcam car, but that's not owned by me, so that's a bit difficult to record. And the new little car which I bought, new to me, does need a bit of work. So if you'd like to see videos about me trying to repair it, please say whether you'd want to or not. So anyway, thanks for watching, and please remember to like, subscribe, and comment down below, because I haven't plugged any of that yet. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night, I raise my hand. To the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining.